Thank you to Snakestone97 for their generous donation on Patreon. If you'd like to join them in their generosity, the link to my Patreon page is in the description. Hello everyone, my name is Decker Link, the trained unprofessional, and welcome back to Temptations Ballad. Uh, yeah, let's just go right into it, I guess. Oh, uh, uh, I gotta do housekeeping real quick. Um, if you haven't filled out the Decker Link 2020 census, I'll stop, I'll stop mentioning it soon because I'm recording this on the 11th, so I can only imagine that there's only a couple days left on it. Hold on, let me see. There's already videos planned through almost the entire end of the fucking census. It ends on the November 15th, so you ain't done, you ain't got much time left. So, yeah, if you want to do that shit, do it. Um... Uh, let's just get right into it. We got a fight to finish. <laughs> yeah. Val yawned as he scanned over the fighting ring's schedule. Um, if I remember correctly, the uh, the last episode had us uh, try. We we found out that the rubies in the crown got extracted. We know Val has one of them, and. Uh, our intrepid main character's uh, plot to get it off of him is by gambling it from him. So let's see how that fucking goes. Where the hell was Clyde? He was supposed to help organize all the fighters this afternoon. Clyde is currently asleep in his office because, uh, once again, our intrepid main character decided to fucking uh, make him... They, not drug him, but it was uh, magic drugging. Because that makes it better? I don't know. Val could use the help, especially after that new last-minute arrival swept through the competition. The crocodile, apparently. The crocodile glanced up wearily at the sound of footsteps approaching his table. Go away. Oh, good lord. Ah, come on, Val. Can't you hear me out for just one moment? Your very presence is trying my patience. Be gone unless you have official fighting ring business. As a matter of fact, I do. Cole grabbed a shy Sid by the hem of his shirt and dragged him over to the table. My fighting buddy here has been tearing through all your fighters like nothing. Don't you think it's time he got his hands on a real challenge? Val remained silent. You are the fighting ring's strongest contender. Are you ready to face my buddy in the ring? Or are you too scared after seeing him demolish everyone else? Sid flinched as Val glanced up at him, unimpressed. The kid's got raw strength, but no technique. He is not worth my time. I only fight the strong. Val turned back to his scheduling sheet. Now leave me be. Neither of you have anything worth betting on anyway. Cole immediately tossed down his entire sack of gold from Sid's winnings. All the gamblers in the crowd suddenly lit up at the sight of gold coins spilling across Val's table. This was their chance to win back all their losses. Everyone in the room quieted down and watched Val's reaction intently. Looks like the crowd is pretty interested in seeing this happen. Wouldn't want to disappoint your fans, would ya? Val glared with disgust. Quality bone breaker, you did not earn a single copper of these winnings. Typical. Stealing others' hard work and using them to your own benefit while without a single risk to yourself. You are everything I despise about the weak and spineless. My answer to your challenge remains the same. Now leave. Val's words stung harder than he expected. Sid crouched down next to Cole with a look of concern. Hey, boss, you okay? Not really. We don't have anything to bet against Val for the rubies. No risk, my ass. It's not like I have anything on me that's worth... Cole suddenly fell silent. His expression conflicted. Maybe... His hands hovered reluctantly for a moment before he reached up to grasp his loot. 
Val stared as Cole quietly placed his newly gifted loot onto the table. This is the loot that his dad bought for him. Or got for him. What am I supposed to do with this? It's, uh... It's a very nice loot. Yes, I see you fiddling with one often when your father comes here to fight. This one appears to be... appears brand new. A gift? You certainly seem reluctant to part with it. Even now, Cole's hands twitched as though resisting the urge to snatch it back. My old one broke. Papa gifted me this new one this morning. Hmm. A nasty smile spread across the crocodile's face. Very well. I accept your challenge. Uh? The crowd surrounding them murmured doubtfully. Betting over a little loot? That can't be worth it. Val's serious face melted into a dark sneer. The prize is not this little loot. My prize upon victory is seeing Colody Bonebreaker's crestfallen face upon losing it. That constant smug grin on your face is sickening. It shall be refreshing to see it dance a new tune. What the fuck does that mean? His smile widened upon seeing Cole's grimace. And what will you be betting in exchange? It's gotta be something you're equally unwilling to let go of, at least. Val hesitated for a moment before reaching into his pocket and tossing out a single large red ruby. It shone brilliantly, despite the dim lighting of the fighting ring as it tumbled onto the table. Whoa, that's a pretty big gem you've got there. Do you sure you're okay with betting that against a little old loot? Unlike you, Colody Bonebreaker, I'm a man of honesty and honor. It will be impossible for me to lose against an amateur like your new badger friend. May this gem represent my confidence in your defeat. Val leaned forward, his smile widened to show an abundance of sharp teeth. I look forward to sharing the news of your loss with your father. The large crocodile grabbed Cole's loot off the table and tossed it back to him. Why don't you hold on to your toy just a little longer before you lose it forever? With a laugh, the larger man made his way toward the judges' table to arrange their new fight. Cole grasped his loot tightly. It's just a loot. Why is he getting so worked up over this? All things considered, this exchange was wildly in his favor, even still. Cole imagined explaining to his father why his new loot went missing and felt a little sick. Hmm... As the judges began rearranging the schedule to fit in Cole's sudden challenge, Cole sat in the back of the room in sullen silence. Artemy and Sid approached him with mutual looks of concern. Sir Cole, are you quite all right? Hmm? Oh, I'm fine. It's just a damn loot. It's worth nothing compared to a big old ruby, right? Sure, but but you're still allowed to feel bad about it. Sid cracked his knuckles and nodded with determination. I crushed all those other fighters, and I'll crush Val too. You don't have to worry about losing your stuff with me around. The edge of Cole's mouth twitched into a smile. Thanks, man. Say, that last charge of bardic inspiration had worn off already, hasn't it? Here, uh, let me... Oh, here it goes. Yeah. Cole leaned up to plant a tender kiss on Sid's cheek. Badger flushed red, but did not resist it. Try not to lose, all right? Sid nodded fiercely. It's your honor on the line. I won't fail you, boss. Artemy walked up to Sid with a smile. I am certain there are rules against this, but it can't be wrong to support my comrades, could it? Here. Oh! Bless. Artemy clasped her hands together and closed her eyes. Golden light poured from her palms and enveloped Sid. 
His fur stood on end as Sid suddenly felt himself buzzing with holy energy. His entire body felt strangely jittery as though he had consumed several cups of coffee. Whoa, I feel even stronger than before. Did I get more buff or something? What kind of spell was that? It's just a simple bl- <laughs> Oh, I'm seeing stars. Oh, holy shit, that was a bad one. It's just a simple bless spell. It acts similarly to Sir Cole's bardic inspiration, except it only lasts about a minute or so. It is much more potent, however. Do your best, Sir Sid. We shall exchange high fives once you achieve victory. Oh, steal your resolve or whatever the fuck, uh, the thing I say. Just watch, that Val guy is going to be eating his words once I wipe the floor with him. Thanks for all the help, guys. I won't let you down. Oh, God. With renewed vigor, Sid charged toward the fighting ring in a determined scramble. Artaby couldn't help but chuckle at the sight. She turned towards Cole to see him clutching his loot tightly with an air of sullen defeat. Anxious thoughts seemed to cloud the hyena's mind. Artaby frowned, worried. She hesitantly placed a comforting hand on Cole's shoulders and offered an encouraging smile. That loot. While it appears to be a simple instrument, I see that it holds great value to you. It was very brave and honorable of you to put things you treasure on the line. I pray our efforts will do your risk justice. Cole laughed quietly. <laughs> Nobody's accused me of being honorable before. Artemy chuckled. Indeed. I hear you have quite the reputation, sir. Sir, 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 sir Cole. However... Throughout our short time together, you have done everything to try and aid me in my plight and comfort me in distress. Your effort and kindness do not go unrecognized. Worry not, Sir Cole. We will make sure to achieve victory for you. Now let's go cheer on Sir Sid. Artemy gave Cole another firm pat on the back before making her way towards the fighting ring. The next match was about to start. That gnawing guilt in Cole's chest resurfaced as he felt the warmth of Artemy's hand leave his shoulder. Val was right. What is someone like you doing with scum like me? Ooh. Yeesh. The air was thick with tension as the crowd gathered around the fighting ring for what was perhaps the most polarizing fight of the day. Sid Shrikewood, the startlingly strong rookie against Val, the ring's persisting champion. Artemy and Cole watched from the sidelines as the two readied themselves in preparation for the battle. Sid was shifting weight from one leg to another, bouncing on his feet restlessly while waiting for the judge's signal. Acting, <laughs> doing that Brock Lesnar dance. Val simply stood unmoving like a statue, his glare focused and undisturbed. He's pulling a Mike Tyson. That shit scared people. The crowd was practically vibrating in anticipation. Cole gripped the ropes surrounding the ring anxiously. He didn't like these odds. Luckily, he took some precautions and set up a backup plan in case they lost, but... Cole jumped out of his thoughts at the sensation of a comforting hand settling on his shoulder. Artemy gave him a reassuring smile. Worry not, Sir Cole. I have faith in Sir Sid's chances for a successful victory. Mm hmm? Oh, my God. Artemy suddenly jerked her head back, her eyes narrowed suspiciously. She sniffed the air as though tracking a faint scent. Did you just feel that? Huh? Feel what? That scent. It was very... bad. Sounds pretty normal. This place isn't exactly the peak of good hygiene. No! I mean, it was utterly foul. Like the faintest hint of some sort of horrid magic. Artemy glanced around the crowd and sniffed again. Almost necrotic in nature. Cole frowned. 
Necrotic magic? I doubt anyone here is educated enough to for complicated spells like that. The shrill shriek of the judge's whistle reverberated through the room, cutting off their thoughts. Sid and Val approached each other and exchanged solemn glares. The fight begins. Holy shit! Sid immediately charged at Val with a blistering tackle, but was dodged by an idle sidestep. With a sweep of his foot, the crocodile sent Sid tumbling into a brick wall from his own momentum. Clutching his head in pain, Sid rolled over and nearly dodged a foot stomping down on him. Sid scrambled onto his feet and tried to catch his breath. The magic from both Cole and Artemy coursed through his veins. His senses felt sharp and focused, but his pounding heart made concentration rather difficult. His opponent regarded him coolly. Val slowly approached him without a care in the world. Oh, excuse me. You got spirit, kid. And decent strength to boot. But not all fights are won from strength alone. You're talking an awful lot for someone who's pre pretending not to care. Sid charged again and swung with his fists, and then a kick. Growling with frustration, he tried punching yet again. Each and every one of his strikes were evaded with either a small sidestep or a lean backwards. For such a large and bulky man, he was certainly was dexterous. Val hardly moved from his position as he weaved between Sid's strikes with ease. Suddenly, he stepped forward and landed a solid kick straight into Sid's abdomen. Sid felt all the air leave his lungs. He dropped to the ground at Val's feet, coughing and hacking as he struggled to regain his breath. A foot suddenly slammed downward onto the small of his back, crushing him into the stone floor. Sid struggled in vain to get up, but remained pinned by Val's foot and body weight. The crocodile shook his head with disappointment. You've got potential. Shame you'd waste it by working with quality. Ooh, Sid snarled and swung his arms backwards, arm backwards, elbowing Val in the back of the knee. Ooh, that's a good fucking hit. The crocodile's foot buckled as he lost his balance and fell forward. Sid swiftly arched backwards, the back of his skull connected with Val's jaw with a sickening crack. Val howled in pain and clutched his bleeding mouth as Sid staggered to on onto his feet, his ears ringing from the collision. Adrenaline pumped through his veins as Sid returned to a fighting position with a rabid grin. Don't underestimate me, old man. Fighting is the one thing I excel in. Holy shit. From the crowd, Cole watched the fight breathlessly, his brow knotted with anxiety and worry. Hey, nighty. You've been in a lot of sparring matches, right? How does this one look to you? Hmm? Uh huh? Artemy? He turned around to spot Artemy fully distracted as she scanned through the crowd with a nervous frown. A necrotic presence from earlier. Why can't I feel it anymore? I didn't see anyone leave from the crowd. Something is afoot. I am absolutely sure of it. You're still worried about that? The presence of dark magic is not something to be simply ignored, Sir Cole! Artemy squinted, completely ignoring the clash between Sid and Val while observing the crowd around them suspiciously. She was missing something. Hmm? Out of the corner of her eye, Artemy spotted someone approaching the bidding table. Someone wearing a cloak that's gonna take the fucking ruby, which is what fucking Cole should have done. Artemy blinked and rubbed her eyes. He was ha she was having trouble looking directly at them. Her vision became unfocused whenever she attempted to stare at the stranger. Perhaps this was a spell? Artemy had read about the existence of magic that lowered people's awareness of the caster, even amongst the crowd. Everyone else here was entranced by the boisterous fight within the ring, paying no attention to this cloaked figure as they approached the bidding table. Not even the judge noticed this figure's presence, despite standing almost right beside them. Artemy's eyes watered as she rubbed them again. She tried her best to focus on this figure out of the corner of her field of view. The figure glanced around as though surveying the area. Most suspicious. They covertly reached a hand out from under their cloak, their gaze trained on the glistening ruby on the table. Artemy immediately slammed her fist against the table and stood up. Halt! Thief! The entire room fell silent. The figure froze, their hands still outstretched. 
As the crowd slowly realized what was happening, the judge and a dozen other fighters approached the figure furiously. Over the right there, we don't take kindly to thieves here. The cloaked figure swore loudly and glared at Artemy from under their hood. This could have passed quietly without a scene. You have forced my hand. Oh shit. Ooh. A flash of red light suddenly erupted from the figure's hand, filling the room with a sinister crimson glow. The crowd's shrieks and hollers echoed against the stone walls as people scrambled back in surprise. Then, the room was silent. Artemy grimaced as the light slowly disappeared and she unshielded her eyes. What was that? Is everyone alright? There was a groan as Artemy turned around. Oh my god. Ugh, my head. Why is the room spinning so much? Jesus. Sir Cole, are you alright? Uh, hey, nighty. You should really stop messing with the cloaked fellow over there. Stop being so troublesome. Oh, ho, ho. we've seen this before. Huh? Is this some sort of mind control spell? Artemy glanced around, panic rising. The rest of the crowd began picking themselves off the ground, clutching their heads and muttering incoherently. Sure enough, everyone's eyes contained the same sinister red glow. Interesting. To have resisted my spell so easily. You truly are the creator's chosen. It is best that I finish my business quickly. The cloaked figure pointed a commanding figure towards Val at the center of the fighting ring. You, bring me the rest of the rubies. Oh god, no. From within the fighting ring, Sid groaned and clutched his head in pain. His thoughts swam like a, a whirlpool of dread. It was becoming difficult to focus or stay conscious. Something was weaving in into the inside of his skull. Huh? What was he doing again? It doesn't matter. The person in the brown cloak. He should probably listen to whatever they say. They seem to know what's going on. Sid's groans of pain faded as he stumbled onto his feet at a drunken pace. Beside him, Val was in a similar state as he stood up with unsteady feet. Uh, this spell always makes them so slow and brainless. Though I suppose this isn't much of a downgrade for you peasants. You, the crocodile! Hurry up and bring me the rubies! As you command, here is the ruby you seek. Val reached into his pocket and pulled out a large, glistening ruby. He carried the ruby? I thought he was... I thought the ruby was on the table, which is why he was reaching out to it. I'm confused now. Like a zombie, he slowly bumbled across the fighting ring toward the cloaked figure. As Val approached, the cloaked figure immediately snatched the ruby out of the crocodile's hand. This is it. Where's the rest of them? One was lost. Another was bought by an unknown noble. Wait, you've lost them? The figure's voice hissed with irked fury. You peasants are utterly useless. Do you have any idea what these rubies contain? What I'm saying, of course you don't. What was I saying? The figure shook their head in disbelief. In any case, I suppose two out of four will suffice. What? The figure reached out to grab the remaining ruby on the bidding table, so I guess he had two. The thing, their fingers slipped through the gem like smoke as the ruby disappeared into wisp. It was an illusion. Did aw? Oh, did Cole swipe it? A minor illusion. That boy. That little hyena must have stolen it off the table and switched it with an illusion when nobody was looking. The cloaked figure whipped their head towards the other side of the room with utter, in utter fury. They pointed a shaking finger at Cole. You lying son of a bitch! Hand me the other ruby! Across the room, Cole groaned mindlessly as he thumbed through his pockets. After a moment, he pulled out the ruby that he had previously pickpocketed from the table while Val wasn't looking. Ahina mumbled drunkenly and stumbled across the room. 
Here's that ruby I stole. Oh, snippity snappity. Dispel magic. A powerful jolt of static electricity suddenly coursed through Cole's veins and snapped him awake. He jumped backwards, hair standing on end. Ow, that fucking hurt! Uh, what's happening? Why is everyone's eyes all red and glowy? Cole clutched his head and glanced around the room in confusion as though he had just woken from a deep sleep. There's no time to explain! Prepare yourself, Sir Cole! The cloaked figure took a step back in surprise. What is the meaning of this? Oh shit, a bolt of lightning ripped through the air and struck the bidding table, narrowly missing the figure by an inch. The cloaked figure whirled around to see where the lightning came from. Oh damn! Damn, this is cool! Holy shit! Artemy reared back and raided another crackling, guiding bolt in her hand, her eyes deadly serious. Undo your control of the people of this establishment and surrender immediately! Let me assure you my next attack won't miss! The cloaked figure stared at the rumbling lightning javelin in Artemy's hand and laughed softly. Silly girl, you think me a fool. They snapped their fingers. Suddenly, Val, along with dozens of people from the audience, stumbled forward and surrounded the figure in a shield of bodies. Artemy growled and lowered her hand. You despicable little! To use bystanders in such a vile fashion! What's wrong, O oh chosen one? Didn't you say you were to strike me down? I'm certain the church wouldn't mind if you fried a few not-so-innocent civilians in the crossfire. Do not mock me, scoundrel! Dispel magic. Ah! Counterspell. Oh, shit. Artemy flinched and fell back as her magic was interrupted. It felt as though someone had drenched her to the bone with ice-cold water. You okay, Nighty? I'm fine. It would appear spellcasting won't be very effective against this foe. The mind-controlled crowd began to advance towards the two of them, arms outstretched and growling viciously. Val and Sid were among the controlled. The two large fighters leapt over the fighting ring fence and joined the crowd in their threatening approach. You can make this easy for easier for everyone involved. Hand over the ruby and I will happily release all the captives. What do you say, little chosen one? Artemy growled and raised her shield. She couldn't draw her sword against these civilians. They were being manipulated. It would not be right to strike them down, even in self-defense. Artemy felt Cole cower behind her, gripping her shoulder anxiously. He does not appear to be very effective in direct combat. Defending him in the midst of a fight will prove difficult. The odds of the situation were simply not in their favor. Sir Cole! Uh huh? Hey, are you do- are you doing? Get your hands off me, you little- Artemy quickly holstered her shield and grabbed Cole, hoisting the smaller man on her shoulder. Hold on! With Cole in tow, Artemy made a mad dash through the crowd, barreling over several people as she charged across the room. Before the cloaked figure could issue any commands, the two of them had already disappeared down the back hallways. What? How did an entire crowd of you fail to catch two measly idiots? The cloaked figure jabbed her finger toward the hallway. Catch them and bring me the ruby! On your or on your heads be the con Oh. On your heads be the consequences should you fail! Everyone in the fight ring murmured in a daze and followed the cloaked figure's directions. Their eyes retained the sinister red glow of the finger of the figure's control. As you command. Will do. Jesus Christ.